I've always been rather fascinated by the native Canadian people, and I express my opinions of them quite freely. And in the somewhat sensitive and politically correct or politically charged atmosphere uh, of any discussion of Canada's Aboriginal population, um, I often get into trouble, but true to my, true to my actual nature, I don't really care. <laughs> um, always someone's ready to denounce you for one thing or another. You're uh, making excuses for their bad behavior or on the other side, you're, uh, you know, generalizing about them or us. Although surprisingly, very few natives get mad when you talk about them. And generally, it's people that are sort of on the politically correct spectrum of things that get mad at you for talking about somebody else as if you know what the hell you're talking about. Well, I make no claims to knowing what the hell I'm talking about, but I still talk. Um, I've often formed the opinion about them that, that the thing that seems to separate their worldview from ours most profoundly, and I do believe it is a profound uh, difference in view, um, is that while the European and various immigrant populations of Canada tend to see the world in terms of kind of a black-white view, in other words, good and bad, that kind of thing. Um, I believe, or to the best of my knowledge, or to the best of my, or to the best of my research, I suppose, such as it is, their view seems to be that the world simply is. Um, it's just something that exists, and it's a universe one has to cope with. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not so good, um, but whatever it is, it just it's just something that happens to exist. I often wonder about just how little anger they feel about their situation in life, but if you get to know them the way I have, you'll notice it. They just, they don't see, um, I shouldn't say they, but enough of them, the, the ones I've met, don't see the encroachment of Europeans and now everybody else upon their, I guess, indigenous lens um, as a general phenomenon. In other words, all the stuff that happened since Columbus, uh, they don't see that as a particularly evil thing. It's more or less just sort of, well, that's what happens. Um, in life, sometimes stuff like this goes on. It's, it's not that anything um, there's anything evil about these white people. They're just sort of a, a force that has to be reckoned with. Um, gross generalization, and one could say that I'm insensitively dismissing uh, 400 years of genocide, tragedy, and murder. Um, I'm not really talking about the phenomenon itself, I'm just talking about the way it's generally seen in my experience by the native population. The world just is. Um, <clears throat> that fascinates me. The view that uh, that life, the universe, and everything is more or less morally neutral. I won't say morally vacuous, but I would say morally neutral in the same way that, you know, Apocalypse Now uh, implied that the jungle was neutral. Uh, Kurtz said the jungle was evil and it rewarded the strong. Um, whereas, you know, the movie, the message of the movie, even the jungle wanted him dead, uh, seems to imply that the jungle sort of thought that going the other way is just as bad as thinking that life should be good. The jungle just is. It's an enemy to friend and foe alike. Uh, in, in a war situation. The Viet Cong were just as subject to malaria and everything else as the Americans were. And that's kind of a metaphor for reality and life itself. It just is. Now, I like those sorts of, I won't call it um, holistic views of the universe, but I suppose I would call it a balanced view of things. Um, and in that vein, um, Something that, that fascinates me is the um, issue that has come up of value states. I have a problem with that, of an actual value state. Uh, good and bad value states, negative states, positive states, that kind of thing. I don't believe that there's such a thing that, uh, that um, a value state exists as an ontological state. I don't think that, that that's even possible. There's only one state 
and that is existent. I am. That's it. Anything else is an attribute to that state. Um, and attributes, anything, anything you can think of potentially has an infinite number of attributes. I have an infinite number of attributes, depending on what perspective or what you go looking for in terms of looking at me, um, you can come up with an infinite number of attributes from, I have X number of hairs on my head, losing a few, but you know, I have X number of cells in my body. I generally politically vote for the left. Uh, I uh, generally uh, avoid the consumption of meat, not because I'm a vegetarian, because I just don't like it. Uh, or that's not that I don't like it, I shouldn't say that. Um, I prefer vegetarian food. But anyway, the point is you can come up with as many attributes for anything as you please. Um, there's no one value state, there's no one state of anything. These are just attributes, these are descriptives to describe something. And there are as many descriptives or attributes as there are perspectives. As there are, there are many answers as there are questions, and there's probably an infinite number of answers to any given question. <clears throat> so, I don't think that it's possible to say that anybody is good or bad, uh, because not only do we have an infinite number of attributes, it's, it may be impossible to actually determine which one is dominant, if any of them are dominant or even could be dominant, or if we could compile a large enough list to determine what is, di what is dominant in that person, even in terms of a value state. Okay, you take somebody, you throw them in Auschwitz and you starve them for a few years or whatever, and chances are he would be in what one might describe as a negative value state. But at the end of the day, do you really know? Does he even know? Because there are plenty of people who hung on to life until they were liberated, long after a lot of other people would have given up and said, screw this, life ain't worth living. Whereas they said, just get me out of here and it'll be <laughs> worth living <laughs> in spades. There's ample evidence of people who, once they were liberated, flourished again after they were, you know, released from Auschwitz or whatever. Um, so I don't think that one could say that a value state actually exists. Uh, by the same token, I don't think you could say a moral value state or an ethical value state exists. No such thing. Um, take people at their absolute best. Um, I don't know. Gandhi. Well, he was a pretty abusive father. Emotionally abusive. Uh, he was passive aggressive to an insane extent and drove both of his sons pretty much out of their minds. Um, you know, you can go digging for all kinds of dirt on just about anybody, and you'll find it. Opposite end of the spectrum, stereotypically Adolf Hitler. Well, he would sit at the table eating his meals, and he would lecture everybody who were eating their Wurst or their, uh, you know, uh, Sauerbraten or whatever, while he was eating his vegetarian nut cutlets and, you know, boiled grain. He would uh, talk to them about the horrors of the slaughterhouses in the various parts of German cities that he'd visited and said, look at how barbaric this habit of eating meat is. It's terrible and inhuman and it's just absolutely cruel. Oh, by the way, is that the list of people that are to be executed today? Okay, here's my signature. <laughs> you know, this kind of thing. Uh, apparently, uh, the people who worked for him as, their, as his staff um, noted that he was incredibly loyal to them. Uh, they were loyal to him. He was actually capable of human warmth, uh, that sort of thing. Um, and at the same token saying that, well, you know, it's just the way of things that the strong must conquer the weak and kill them. And, uh, you know, the, that kind of thing. So we're all a mixed bag, essentially. And when you're going to judge somebody for whether or not they're good or bad, you'd have to know all there is to know about them and have a couple of graphs to compare or something like this. Doesn't exist no such thing. There's no good or bad. There's just people. There's no value states. The only state there is, is in existence. That's your only state. 
Anything else is a descriptive, an attribute, or whatever, an adjective of some form. Um, as far as uh, reality itself, again, same thing. The world just is. Uh, you can go, whatever you go looking for, chances are you'll find it. You want to turn the world into a horrible place? Well, all you got to do is put a horrible spin on everything. Um, you want to put turn the world into a wonderful place? Well, you just become a Ned Flanders and hooray for everything, and there you go. In either case, I think it's a very incomplete and distorted picture. And as I've said before in various videos, the people that are rah, rah, rah for everything almost strike me as horrifying. You know, like, just wait a minute. You're making a world where all kinds of bad things happen look perfect and pristine. Well, the only way, of course, you can justify that is to find scapegoats. Everything would be great if it wasn't for those bad people over there. That's what happens when you have a when you have put start putting moral values on on the world or on existence or go, you know on people. Um, I don't think that one can really pass judgment on anything, um, except for purely um, expedient purposes. In other words, I want to do something, therefore this will get me from here to there. So it's good that I should do this if I want that. Always a conditional. If there's a conditional, it's limited and you've deliberately limited it. And I would say you'd actually gerrymandered it. You've played tricks with reality to get a specific task accomplished. You haven't determined anything concerning value. You haven't determined, determined anything in terms of morality or in terms of uh, um, anything beyond the strictly um, practical level.